And I'm here with uh, Toby Bluth, who does beautiful uh, hand-painted watercolor. There's a huge amount of work involved in each piece that he does. And uh, we're surrounded by a lot of the, uh, some of the pieces that you've done. And actually, two of them I sold the originals for. That one was a commission for my friend. And this one I sold the original to a good friend of mine as well. And um, so explain a little bit about how uh, your pieces are, are constructed. Well, it's all transparent watercolor, and that means it's built up in glazes and, and layers. And you've got to be careful because you can't go back. You can't make corrections on right. it. It's pretty unforgiving. Um, and the first thing I do is I get a concept, and then I don't like to do a lot of sketching. So I work on top of that concept until I've refined the, uh, the actual drawing. And once I have the actual drawing done, I'll clean it up and transfer it to the watercolor paper. Mm -hmm. And then I do an underpainting. And the underpainting is, well, without getting too complex, the physics of light are uh, warm light throws cool shadows and cool light throws warm shadows. Okay. So I will underpaint the whole thing. If it's a warm light, like Geppetto there at the fire, that was all painted in blue first and completely painted and finished. And in blue? In blue. The whole thing? The whole thing. Okay. Like a finished painting. Okay. And, once and then there's an under layer of the drawing. Under, under layer okay. of the drawing is under that. And once I have the blue play, uh, painting, because that gives me uh, the shadows and the, and the lighting and the light direction. And I've worked all that out, the blue paint. And once I finish that, then I start glazing the colors on top of it. And that's, what, that's the first point where I add color. Okay, and then is it, how do you, when you're adding color, what determines where you start adding the color first? Well, you've always got to work from light to dark, so you start with your lightest colors, because, you, you know, you can't lighten anything up. Okay. The light, really, is coming from the paper. And uh, so I, I will start in the lightest colors. I'll start with the wall which has the fireplace and the fireplace, that's the lightest. And then I'll do the floor and then I'll work toward the darker colors. So are you, when you're thinking of the composition of a piece and you're thinking about the way that it's gonna look finished, do you have an idea, in ter do you always think of it in terms of, of light? Yes. That's how you imagine Yeah, the first, the first things that I paint are light and air. And uh, those are two things that are fairly ephemeral. You know, how do you paint light? How do you paint air? Right. But that is what we're seeing, and the objects are, are really there so that we can see the light in there. And, and, and always the characters are perfectly on model, and that's because you were an art director that worked with Disney. <laughs> Talk a little bit about uh, history with Disney. Well, my history with Disney has been a very long one. Uh, I've worked in different departments there. I've worked in development. I've uh, done uh, a lot of books and illustrations for Disney Publishing. And uh, then I was the art director on the Tigger movie. And that was a lot of fun because I got to set the look of the movie. Mm -hmm. And uh, after that, I was the art director on the Three Musketeers with Mickey Mouse, Donald Duck, and Goofy. Mm -hmm. And that was a lot of fun. And then after that, I came up with a concept for Around the World in 80 Days, which Disney bought, and it's in development. Wow, cool. But things develop very slowly right? at Disney. Yes, you the know? list is like very long. Uh -huh. It's a long list, and they take a long time doing it. And um, can you describe a little bit about what being an art director at Disney entails, what, what's involved, and what role that is in terms of how the look of the movie is created and developed? Well, what the art director is doing primarily is setting the look of the picture. Uh, like uh, the Tigger movie or, or the Three Musketeers, the director would say, okay, here's the script, what does the film look like? And I'll go through and I'll do illustrations of the moments, the key moments in the film, and those are, are called keys. And uh, you know, from that, then we know basically what the whole film's gonna look like, and I'll set the tone for things. And then when that part, simultaneously, when you start bringing on the animators and the other artists, uh, then you've got to make sure that everybody follows the keys right. and that everything looks like it was all drawn by one person. Right, and that's so part seems, of the art director's that's job? That's part of the art director's job. And, and what, how do you take care of it being that way? I mean, when you see something kind of falling out of the design sort of idea, then you kind of just rein it back in? Just rein it back in. And do you have Just tell the artist doing it, you know, that doesn't look like 
what, what, we're, what after. we're after it you know it needs to come back and and you know the trick with that is you're trying to build a team because no one person can make an animated film right. or a film of any you know it takes a team and so you got to get everybody playing on the same page and like with any team you know everyone is not of the same ability there mm -hmm. are some people better and some people who aren't and uh, there are some people with enormous egos right and some people with smaller egos from but the top ever, to the bottom from the top egos. to the bottom that's so funny and what you got to do is get everybody playing on the same page right you know so that no matter how well lord like an orchestra no matter how well you play the violin you're part of the string section right and yes. you should be you might indiscernible be the first violin, yes but even so you're still going to be playing Definitely. with everybody else Everyone has the click track. They're all playing with yeah, it. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so as the art director, uh, you're 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 shaping the look of the movie. And because I was just talking to someone about art direction, you're kind of the first line of defense for the design of the entire movie. So they have the script, and then you come in. They hire the art director first, or their ideas of who everybody is going to be um, in the movie at the same time. Yeah. Usually they hire the the art director first because he needs to set that look uh, before anyone else starts drawing things and and sometimes uh, sometimes you'll have a very clear vision of what you want to see and what you want the film to look like uh, when I did the Tigger movie uh, I told the director I think what we need to do here is make this look like the quintessential Winnie the Pooh movies that everyone re remembers. Right, those backgrounds are really beautiful. And it oh, thank you. Ha it stays together really, really well. And it's funny that the number of people as collectors of, of animation, I've noticed a lot of my collectors who are really, really into Winnie the Pooh, and they love the Tigger movie. And I was pleased because several of the, the reviews also mentioned that it uh, had lovingly reproduced the look of the original Tigger movie. And that was true, you know, I wanted it, I kept saying to everybody, I want this to be a film that when people look at it, they would say, is this a Walt Disney film that I missed, that I don't remember? Right. What about uh, with The Three Musketeers, what was your inspiration for the design of the background and the whole way that the movie looked? Well, it was uh, the prime golden age of animation that would be like the brave little tailor and the 40s and uh, 30s. Oh, I see the color palette. Right. Yeah, right. Yeah, so yeah. the whole thing had a sort of dusty aged look to the thing. I wanted it to look like, once again, a film. Uh, my idea with, with making a, a Disney film, even though Walt was not with us, I wanted it to look like a Walt Disney film. Mm -hmm. And I wanted people to say, oh, gee, is that one I missed?